You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. This is Melanie. And in the future, everyone can't be Superman with their own fortress of solitude, but they will be able to visit holographic loved ones that have passed on. So the next time you feel great about yourself, visit the funerarium, and your dear old dad will knock you down a peg or two and give you some humility. This is Jesse. In the future, you won't need doors, because we'll all have Wakandan force shields that you can open one section at a time. This is Randy, and in the future, anytime there's a fun Marvel movie, I'm just going to skip the Avengers movie that follows it. Because it's going to undo it. It's going to undo all of my fun. It's not really going to undo it, but it's going to ruin my fun. It's going to murder all the fun. It's going to murder. Snap of its fingers. Murder at least half of the fun. You, <laughs> you fun murderers. You know what? With that, I should probably, before we even do the welcome to blah, 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 put a spoiler warning for Infinity War. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yes. Just through the whole thing. Spoiler warning for Infinity Avengers Infinity War now. Yeah. And, and the Gauntlet 1, too. The book. And... Yeah, and Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, because we're gonna Spice have to. We're gonna have to mention that. Yeah. So if you haven't read it, you should. Yeah. yeah. Just because you have to. You, uh, you decide <laughs> just, just, just because it's mandatory. <laughs> yep. Welcome to the Grolix Podcast, episode number seventy. Seventy. Seven D. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was an intro. We did. We did. That was something. We did something. Uh, <laughs> so this episode. In fact, all this month, we're going to be talking about Infinity War, which we just lost a bunch of listeners right now. Yeah. No, this episode, we're going to talk about the Avengers of Infinity War movie, because, you know, we finally saw it. And the next Grolix podcast episode, 71, we're going to talk about the Infinity Gauntlet, because that finally came up on our poll list. And hey, what timing? Yep. Good job, internet world. So don't tune out. This is going to be good. I know you're probably tired of every podcast talking about infinity war but that's why we gave that's what that's why we wait like a month or two <laughs> to finally get to these things we, we, we gave, want all the dust to settle we gave you some time to get over it to, to mm-hmm. rub some dirt in it or yeah is, isn't that a thing like shake it off rub some dirt rub, on rub, it just rub some dirt on it and, and get back in there kid run, run it run it under a cold tap <laughs> you, get, yeah, you yeah. got to let all all the other people's opinions ruminate in your brain for a little bit. And now we're just going to blow those all away with our awesomeness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Get ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> I like, I like that confidence. Yep. Thanks. N- not so much Jesse's. He sounded not confident, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hey, do we have in-house news first? Let's kick this off. Right. What do we got? I um, don't. Yeah. What do we got? I got some shorts. <laughs> <laughs> that is very in-house news you do you got some new shorts you got some shorts how do you feel about them i like them they're nice <laughs> they look nice thanks thanks baby mm-hmm. i never get to have any in-house news i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad you did though yeah i don't have any in-house news since the last time we talked really no i don't either um so i guess uh hey Grolic Cinematic Universe, next episode, a week after this episode goes up, we will be talking about... Hey there, listener, it's Randy from In the Future. And I'm just jumping in real quick because I I really was from the future because when we recorded, I said the wrong movies. I jumped way ahead and announced movies we were doing like the episode after next. No, what I should have said was The Thing and Big Trouble in Little China. That's the Grolic Cinematic Universe episode coming out next week. Uh, John Carpenter double block, of course, the John Carpenter version of the thing. And uh, at this point, the only version of uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Although if you uh, tune in for the next episode of GCU, you'll find out that might not be the case. Of course. Anyway, enough wasting time. I got a future, future Randy things. I got future things to do. And uh, I believe Jesse's uh, itching to take this conversation on a side tangent. So side tangent on that, 
after you guys did uh, Predator and Terminator that episode uh, this uh-huh. this weekend. I decided I needed to rewatch Predator, and uh, I think I was messaging you about the score yep. and whatnot. And uh, this morning I was going to try Predator Two, and uh, like I fired it up and I was like, "Yep, I'm going to give it a try." And then that score hit, and Danny Glover gets on the screen, and I don't know what else is going on, and I'm like, "Nope, this is not <laughs> even the same caliber, and I am not ready for it yet." Mm-mm. It is not the same caliber. Eventually, we're gonna revisit the Predator universe, and because I I, I kind of want to rewatch Predator Two, but I know it's not the same. You gotta wait. Yeah, you gotta wait. You can't let you can't well, follow that's the, thing. the first one immediately. That, that's that. that's what I ultimately decided. I was like, nope, too soon. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm I'm not ready to take a, a dip in the uh, in the quality because the quality of the first movie is kind of on its own and then it's like oh because mm. i was like why why don't they make more of these why is there only like three going on four actual predator movies and then and then i fire up uh predator 2 and i was like oh yeah now i remember why the concept is solid because it's okay it's not the doing the same thing but it's basically just like let's do this let's take the same basic setup but do it in the city right it's it's just it's not it's not very good. Well, because it opens with like a hyperbolic city scenario, like it's. Re- uh-huh. I mean, like honestly, uh, you guys are doing uh, RoboCop. Will be the RoboCop episode will be up by the time this goes live. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like this predator, the Predator Two city, it could be a precursor to the RoboCop city, even though it's or even though it's in California. I feel like. Like it's the the violence is dialed up to ridiculous level because it's so hot because that's when the predator shows up is when it's hottest mm-hmm. you know, but it was like this is ridiculous like they're double fisting Uzis and they're just like like I don't know I was just it's like super weird it's super heightened and ex- yeah they take it to extremes but there's like unlike unlike RoboCop there's nothing behind it there's like no reason for it it's just. It's America. Extreme. Double fisting Uzis. <laughs> this is <you>. America. <laughs> <laughs> but if I remember right, it comes across as very cheesy, like kind of mm-hmm. hammy, like over the top in a not a good way. Right. Is Danny Glover no. getting too old for this oh. <laughs> stuff? I don't think he says like it, he, but. He probably is. Was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was. He doesn't say it, but he, he is. He was, he was getting too old for this back when he was in Lethal Weapon, so this had to come out <laughs> after that. The score, man, that's a good score. Well, and and they kind of like they they kept that the same. They kind of kept the same score. They probably they probably still had the rights to all that music, so they're like, we'll just keep using it. I mean, I get it. Like you'd want to kind of retain the things that work, I guess. The score. The problem is when you take the score out of it's just so like for me, it's so connected to the first one. So yeah. If you take it out of that setting and put it to anything else, like it's just like not a really super urban work. setting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's it, not going to work. It was a little weird. It's like that, leopard print pants on an old fat lady. Y- yes, like leopard print pants on an old fat lady. Yep. It's just not going to work. <laughs> nope. Keep that in the jungle. That score is almost like, almost doesn't fit the first movie. It's just, it's so good. And the first movie's good that it works and it's tied together now. But it's really a like it's not a subtle score. No, although I guess the first movie's not a subtle movie. No, that's true. <laughs> so, that's true. But you, I, I would there. There are like suspenseful, like kind of like creepy music moments, but it's such a big score that it really emphasizes that aspect of it over like horror. I guess I haven't seen it in a while, and um, I do not recall the score. It was not that big. It didn't have that big of an impact on me. I if you heard it though, you'd be like, oh. There's I'm a, just saying. There's some music. That's what I'd say. No, no. It, it's like, a, oh, yeah. it's pretty in your face. Yeah. I didn't remember it being that in my face, but it, it totally is. I'm just saying I wouldn't recognize it as, oh, that's from the Predator. You would. I don't know. I guarantee you would. 100%. Because it's not like, it's, I don't know, there's something about it that's not like most scores. It's got this kind of percussion thing that happens and you'd recognize it. It's kind of like rewatching RoboCop. As soon as like the title comes up and that music starts, I was like, "Oh, the <laughs> RoboCop music! I forgot yeah. all about that." Uh, it's pretty awesome. Anyway, memorable, memorable movie scores. Moon, Moon, mm-hmm. yeah, Moon, Moon. But Moon is like it's good music. It's Clint Ma- Clint Mansell, but it's 
not like unique to Moon. You know what I mean? I okay. Uh, compared to other scores, yeah, it's different, but it sounds like Clint Mansell stuff. Oh well, maybe I just don't, don't know him, but uh, when I hear it, I'm like, oh, it's Moon. That's true. M O O N. That spells Moon. Wow, that's <laughs> a weird reference. <laughs> You've been watching a lot of old things, huh? Yeah, I, I don't know. Or reading, I don't know. What is that a reference to? The Stand. Um, yeah, Stephen King. Never read it or watched the the mini series. Yeah. 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 I I've done both. I haven't read much in the way of Stephen King. I got better things to do with my time. Not that that's oh. a bad thing to do with my time, <laughs> but I well, I haven't in a while, but I've read a lot of it in my life. I got better things to do with my time. Let's talk about the comic books we read. <laughs> There's a comic book movie that we do go to. We do. Yeah, but I'm not going to read The Stand in two and a half hours. No, that's true. I got time. No, it's pretty thick, actually. I got time to read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're we'll bringing it right back. Way better than I expected. Oh, man. <laughs> it even rhymed with the actual quote. Man, I got my Growlix quote for the end of this episode or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, well, let's let's. What is this? Let's get on. Yeah, movie. Yeah. Hey, so, so we went and saw the latest Marvel movie. I don't. I don't have anything to like. Everybody knows what it is. I don't need to introduce it. It's it's the all of them in one movie. Movie. Yeah, it is like kind of more so. Like as the as their universe kind of expands, it becomes. Because the other Marvel movies, the other Avengers movies, to me, yeah, it is like all the heroes coming together. But the Avengers felt like the Avengers, its own movie. Right. Mm-hmm. And Avengers Age of Ultron, unfortunately, felt like the Avengers Age of Ultron, its own movie. Right. Mm-hmm. This this one, and and kind of Civil War a little bit, is st- starting to feel like the Defenders, where it's like, I'm not watching this movie. I'm watching parts of these different movies cut together. Mm-hmm. Like, But maybe that's because... It takes place like it's it, cosmic, you mm-hmm. know, and so it takes place in all these very different settings. So right. I think that's part of it. Kind of had teams. So it's mm-hmm. like each team kind of felt like it was leading its own movie. Guardians of the Galaxy is probably, and mind you, for me, this is not a con, but like when you go to Guardians of the Galaxy, the tone shifts because you're hanging out with the Guardians of the Galaxy crew, right? Like cast. So, like, it's going to shift a little bit to feel like. They belong there, and I don't think that's a I don't think that's a bad thing. But just a comment, like this is one of the first ones where it really felt like just let's mesh them all together instead of like it's our it's a movie with these guys in it. It's like no, these are all these movies. <laughs> right. But you know what? The way they set it up, though, they did it so that the next movie can be all serious because you notice who who uh, was part of the reaping. The reaping. Yes, the funny people, like all of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Except, no. except you know what the next movie is? Ant Man. Oh, well, he wasn't there. <laughs> right. No, you're right, though. The Well, the next Avengers movie, though. Yeah. Is, I mean, they're going to have to, we're going to have, mo- I'm assuming, most of an Avengers movie before we get everybody back. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what'd you guys, what'd you guys think of this? I liked it. Were you, I, I did. Oh, my God. I, I liked the ending. I was like, wow, that's, that's really impressive. I think that's the most impo- most positive I've ever heard you about any Marvel movie we've ever discussed or yeah, watched. Probably. Well, I mean, there's some of it that's really annoying and whatever, but I can overlook it all. Super impressed. Thanks. Well, how about you, Jesse? How did this strike you? I, I yeah, I liked it. I was impressed, but I'm I'm kind of a mark for all these Marvel movies. Even even Age of Ultron, as bad as it is, uh, there's parts of it I really enjoy. So yeah. I I really liked it, and yeah, with the uh, with the ending, like m- mad respect for the ending because I was like, oh, even when I kind of figured it out before going in, because I kind of mm-hmm. figured it out because, I mean, perspectives. We'll probably get into that, but yeah, um, yeah, I w- I was like, no, they wouldn't. They did as much as it would make this podcast way this episode way better if I was like, yeah, it was okay. I don't know. That's not the case. I liked it. <laughs> You did like it. Like, okay. Yeah. I liked it. I thought it, yeah, I thought it was pretty awesome, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could have kept going. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I would have been was... down for another. I want the next one now. Oh, yeah, for real. I don't really get, okay. I think it was a really good call on, on their part, the movie makers, to make Thanos a more, a, like a kind of a sympathetic type character. Yeah, kind of. Um, They definitely humanized him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I still don't understand 
his motivation. Like I was saying to Randy, I'm like, okay, but if you reduce the population of the universe, they're still going to breed and it's still going to go right back to it. So you just do it over and over or what? Yeah, but you'd have that time before you'd have to worry about it again. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I get to watch yeah, it. I mean, if it took this long to get to the point where he's like, I need to do this, you know, you give him, he'd still have some time. Yeah. Yeah, his motivation right off the bat is like so markedly different from the books because oh, yeah. Yeah. in the in the books he like he even gains that power that he has in this movie like pre pre Infinity Gauntlet um uh-huh. he gains that because of his motivation like he he talks someone into giving him that power. I'm not sure where to start with this. <laughs> okay, I know where to start. Movie starts. Okay. <laughs> okay. My first concern what happened to the rock guy? Oh and yeah, the cool Valkyrie chick. I know what to everything them? that was awesome about about Thor Ragnarok. We're like, nope, it all happened off panel. Thor Ragnarok's like one of my favorite of the Marvel movies up to this point. Like it's it was so good. And then this movie starts off by, hey, you remember that movie that you guys loved? That like the you know there was a lot of goodwill, right? No, we're just gonna stomp on it. Yeah, I think it was definitely like I mean they set it up at the end of Thor and the post credits of Thor, but. I think that was definitely like intentional. They were going to open the movie with that knowing, I mean, plot wise it works anyway, but knowing that how people are going to feel about it, given like given Thor Ragnarok and how that movie was. God, they just gut punch you right on the, right off on the, the opening, opening scene. You're like, Oh, what's everyone's favorite uh, Marvel villain so far? <laughs> oh yeah. No. <laughs> Guess who's going first? Not anymore. Yep. Hell the yep. King, baby. I, on the other hand, I was not curious about where the rock guy and, and the Valkyrie were because they were dead. No, they weren't. <laughs> don't, you, <laughs> don't you say that. <laughs> I know. They should be dead. Like, I don't see how half of the people on there. Thor later says he killed half of his people. I seen it. Yeah, yeah. There was a spaceship floating in half, and the half we did see blew up. That other half is still dead. Yeah, they're gone. They're gone. They lied to you. <laughs> yeah. Half of those people didn't survive. They don't all have weird god powers. That is the one thing that I'm like, what are they going to do with this franchise? I mean, if they decide that uh, Chris Hemsworth has done enough movies now, then like, who who is even left to, to be Asgard if they do a Mighty Thor, which somebody put out a, you know, like a slate of movies that are supposedly coming up? I, I don't I don't know where you would even go with it. Thor Ragnarok killed at least half of the Asgardian population. Mm-hmm. Right. And then to say that this movie killed half of that, like there's nobody left. It wasn't even really that big of a place to begin with. No. <laughs> right. If all the people that were left fit on that one ship. Mm-hmm. That's like Omaha. Yeah. Which I guess is still a good amount of people, but it's not like, like- a- another world of people. No. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they kind of, they really left the, that franchise in ruins. So yeah, yeah spo- spoilers. Uh, th- so they killed Loki. We basically alluded to that, Did- and they killed a Heimdall, or we don't mm-hmm. know. No, no, nah, yeah, he's he's pretty, but he's dead. He's toast. Yeah, he's dead. And I think those, I think those deaths, they'll stick, right? I mean, I don't see them bringing them back. Not of those, all not those the deaths, two. of all the deaths, those, it seemed like they made a point to like, yeah, no, it. Well, if they're gonna like reverse things why not reverse it all the way go like set time way back that's true they could bring them all back get in the way way back machine and fix it but i have a feeling they're only gonna undo the people that like snapped yeah in this during the snap i have a feeling that anybody else is not gonna be undone um which is pretty bold and maybe they didn't have it maybe they you know maybe it's a matter of like well what else can we do with loki we've you know they've kind of pushed his character like they gave him a bit of an arc finally they can make him an avenger no yes they can the other avengers will not have that well they'll learn to live with it tony stark's gonna learn to live with it that dude that dude gets that dude has a bad attitude you're right (laughs) he he, does he He does indeed he's getting too old for this stuff and he (laughs) needs to uh, retire he's murta who knew (laughs) gotta retire with honey pots and they'll be happy together and go off and not worry about the avengers anymore Man, this movie manipulates you in such good ways that now that I think about it, because, okay, so I didn't really have internet spoilers. I actually had seen some stuff that I thought was a spoiler, and it wasn't. Like, I seen stuff that made me, le- that led me to believe, 
again, we already give a spoiler warning, so you know we're just going to talk freely about it. So I saw a headline that made me think that Cap- Captain America was one of the ones that was getting the axe. And I was like, because I was going into it, I was like, well, I know some major Avenger is getting it. It seems like be- after every movie, we hear that the actor that's playing this person is done, you know? Mm-hmm. But they're stupid and they should take a take a hint from Wolverine and give it another just 20 keep, years. Just keep doing it. Yeah. I bet those paychecks are hard to turn down. Yeah, yeah. That, that Disney money. Ooh. But that's not the case. Captain was fine. Moody, but fine. Right. Mm-hmm. Emo, emo cap. <laughs> emo cap. We don't get it. Like, they handle him so strangely. He's really not in it that much. Like, no, he's yeah. like the one where it's like, what he what's he been doing? You know, they treat him like the movie treats him with a strange, like, uh, reverence mm-hmm. that it doesn't give other characters. I find that weird. It like, is I weird. don't get well, why. Well, it's the Russo brothers. <laughs> they, they did Civil War. They did... Uh, didn't they do Winter Soldier too? The, yeah, Winter Soldier and Civil War, yeah. He's so pure. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Most of the spoilers I saw, I misread. Like, I misinterpreted. And we'll get into this a little bit more later, I think. I knew what the finger snap was about. Oh, my point was that this movie misleads the viewer in interesting ways. Right. Because it felt like that whole Tony Stark pepper pot scene, and they kind of play it dramatically when he's on the spaceship, you know, but it felt like that was setting up for Iron Man's going to die. Right. Kind of like, um, not as, not as obvious, but like, and not, I don't think necessarily played for laughs. I think it was played just to kind of manipulate the audience to heighten the, the surprise of, of the ending. But it's kind of like speaking of age of Ultron setting up Hawkeye, like giving him all this backstory out of nowhere to where everybody's like, he's dead. And then pulling the rug out. You're right, yeah. They totally set up. Tony seems like he wants, you know, he's to talk about having a kid and all this. Like, you know, oh, he's done. <laughs> yeah, nope. Yeah. He's the one left on, on Titan or whatever yeah. that's alive still. Like, he's the one that survives in, out of that group at the end. So, But that's worse for him, I think. It is. So it's the most horrible thing we could do to Tony Stark. This Iron Man 3 established really interesting, like, character arc for him. Because, I mean, I know there was the Iron Man 2 character arc was a little weak, like, so he kind of fell off the wagon again, like whatever. There wasn't much to it, but Avengers and then how Iron Man three kind of established his reaction to Avengers set an in- really interesting arc to where I don't think he was cut out for the the superheroing. Uh uh-uh. It's really oh, done yeah. like bad things for him. Of course, he'd be upset at the end of this movie, but just like leaving him there by himself, it's like oh. If he wasn't broke before, he's broke now. Well, and mm-hmm. then, uh, like, the last time we saw him was in Civil War, and he found out all that stuff about his parents being killed by the uh-huh. Winter Soldier. I mean, like, dude has had some trauma since he started being Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah, it is not. Which is funny, because he's, like, outside of, like, Chris Christopher Pratt and um, whatever Paul Rudd characters, he was, like, the the super quip, quippy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he still is when he's in it. He's the super quippy guy. Yeah. So it's interesting that really he's the one that they push darker and darker. At least that's because Robert Downey Jr. is awesome and versatile. That's no, you're you're to- totally right. Like I know, yeah, he's great for that, and he can go dark, man. I've seen that one movie where he was a drug addict. <laughs> Which one? What is that one? I don't know, but he he uh, it's got that one guy from Pretty and is it Pretty and Pink or Sixteen Candles. That's a bad guy from the eighties, blonde guy, Spader maybe. He was more isn't. James Spader, isn't he a redhead guy? Okay, Weave Morse. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. What, what, him and Ultron were lighting up? Wow, you're right. He was Ultron, wasn't he? He did the voice. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. Well, in another movie, he uh, sold Robert Downey Jr.'s buttocks to other men because he owed him money for drugs. Oh, okay. Yeah, what is that movie? I've heard of it. I've never seen it. And then he dies at the end, I think, too. Boilers. Well, sorry. For the movie, we, we don't can't even know re- what the movie is. Gosh. Yeah, but people do. Somebody knows. <laughs> you know what? No, if they know what it is, they've seen it, mm-hmm. or they're not gonna see it. But it's old. Oh, the other ways in which this kind of manipulates people. So, if this, if you've read the comic, I found it really interesting, and maybe it comes across weird if you don't know. But they keep referencing the snap specifically. Mm-hmm. The snap. He could snap. Several people say it's very specifically. He could snap, and half the people would be gone, and. In the comic, spoilers for the comic, for Infinity Gauntlet specifically, 
when he finally is like, it's almost like a whim. It's not a whim. That's what he was supposed to do. He just didn't. Mm -hmm. But when he, when he does it, it's almost like a whim. He's just like, oh yeah, okay, snap. And half the people are gone. But that becomes like, it's just like, that's a great moment in it. Yeah. It, it, to me it was, but we'll talk me about too. that next episode. Well, yeah. I want to talk about it a little bit now. Okay. Because I, that's one of the things that I liked better in the book than in the movie, which mm -hmm. I, I mean, I had seen the movie first, but because all of the movie was like, we have to stop this. We have to stop this. And in the book, it's like, they didn't even know it was going to happen. No, it's they just, didn't know it. Walking around and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it has a way better reaction from the people. And. And I wish they would have pulled on that. I mean, like, I wish they would have pulled on that. And maybe that's what the next movie is for. Like, maybe we'll get mm -hmm. more reaction to what happened. The the end credit scene with um Samuel. Yeah, mm. that I I hadn't thought about it, but then as soon as that scene started and everything started going down, like oh yeah, that chaos is chaos started breaking of... out, and I was like, oh, that's what I want to see. I want to yeah. see like in the city when the uh, what is it? What is the what's what is the biblical thing called? The rapture when everybody's left. The when the rapture happens because that's what it would be like. Yeah, yeah. essentially half of the people just oh vanish. they could really uh -huh. play on that man. They could really oh yeah they could because yeah. they, they don't they don't go there in the book, but like. That would be ripe territory for a movie. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And they wouldn't even have to go full into it, but just reference it. And that would activate the imagination. And we're like, oh mm -hmm. man, this, I mean, like, this really would feel like end times if, yeah. uh, well, if this happened, you know? Yeah. It occurred to me. And I think, I don't know if it was, no, it was the book where there was some guy with this, with a, a sign, you know, one of the doomsday end of the world guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe some of the tie ins got into it in the book as well but i'm surprised it didn't come up more but then again the comic is so like kind of like the movie it's it's bouncing between so many characters right that kind of s sets of characters that's another thing that i thought thought was similar about both of them except the worst in the book that i'm like okay there's like five billion people in here and some of these i don't even know and some of them i really don't care about mm -hmm. why do we have to know everybody why do we have to why does every single person have to be seen even if they don't do anything Anyway. Did you feel that way about the movie? A little bit. Of all the characters that felt... Unnecessary? I think the Black Panther characters felt Ye the most, most forced in. Yeah, aside yeah. from it being a pivotal like place to have a battle. And that's, it but, could have been that's anywhere. Yeah. yeah, right. And actually, like the trailer has a shot where like they're all running through like a forest. That's not Wakanda. Mm. And right. that shot's not in the movie. And the Hulk is in that shot. So I think that was seriously just made for the trailer. Mm -hmm. Or it's coming up. Maybe it could be like next. Well, I guess it wouldn't even be next. But that enforces the point that like it could be anywhere. Right. Yeah. I mean, they handled it well. They need somebody to do like super tech stuff with uh, the vision. So I didn't. Yeah, I didn't understand what the point of all that was. Anyway, they were just trying to. They were trying to extract the power stone or the was stone the from his... mind mind gem without killing him. Without killing him, so that. Scarlet Witch could destroy it, the stone. But did they not think that if he had all the others, then it wouldn't matter? They didn't well, no, it it would, though, to a point. I mean, he'd still be, he was still, like, the most powerful, like, I don't think he utilized the, the glove like he could have. Kind of took his time about it once he had it, well, like. That's good, because none of the characters did either. Like I was saying with the the Scarlet Witch, when she's fighting um the people that are coming, the, the bad guys that come to get the stone in the first place. Uh, she can barely defend herself, yet later in the movie, she can destroy half an army. Well, that's, you know, obviously there's a fluctuation of power here that you're not in, in understanding how to use right or something, or you're just not. The little bit she's been in the movies, she's been, they've used her power super, like, what's the word? Inconsistently? That's exactly, yeah. Inconsistently. Well, I'm, uh, the gems themselves have been kind of inconsistent. I mean, uh... They kind of explain it in in the movie in that they create this glove that can actually harness the abilities, and Thanos is just so powerful that he could actually wield them somehow. But it's mm -hmm. like when you look back at uh, you look back at Guardians of the Galaxy one, like it's going to kill Peter Quill and his friends just to try and harness one of them. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know which gem that was, if that was the power gem or what. But they're touching it bare. This is a glove. It's okay. Well, he touched them all bare, though, to put them in the glove. Oh, that's right. Did he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he crushed yeah, he them always... out of whatever case they were in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're he right. put them in there. They kind of established, and this was smart, I guess, but leads to like 
me feeling like he didn't really utilize the glove very well. It almost seems like he'd use one at a time and he had to do the fi- fist clinch because at one point that's even part of, like, I mean, that's obviously a mechanic. The cape wraps around it and all that to keep mm-hmm. him from closing his fist. Like that's how he would use it. And I know in the comics, like I know every time he'd use it, he'd have his fist clinched, but I just figured that was because it looked cool mm-hmm. because it seemed to me like it's just a matter of like you have it, you have the power, like it, you can think yeah, whatever and it happens. The, the closing the fist shouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. Right. But I guess that was a smart way to like throw in a mechanic to keep him from being completely overpowered, even mm-hmm. though technically he was. Yeah. Because his reality altering ability, like he used <laughs> once. Yeah. Like that, he could just stopped everything. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He did not utilize the time gem hardly at all. Yeah. That's another thing. Once, once you got that, then just move forward. Move to the future when everything, all this is done. But, but uh, you know, to to cut him some slack, neither did Doctor Strange. Yeah. Like, hey, we we could try this again. <laughs> Why didn't he? Let's not just sit here and look at the future. Let's go back to before he ever got any of the stuff and uh, make it not happen. Yeah. Let's go save the, the giant dwarf. That's the problem, though. Or at like, least cause... undo uh, Star-Lord's chicanery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which I get. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was emotional, but also, like, if somebody's going to, like, be the idiot in that situation, it's going to be him. <laughs> right. But, man, that was so frustrating. It's like, dude, they have they got it. Just just wait. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of an issue of just dealing with characters that are so powerful that you either have to figure out ways to, like, make it so that they don't use it or just hope nobody questions it too much when they don't use it, you know? Right. Yeah. But that's a comic book issue dealing with super powerful characters you know there weren't a lot of like surprises but uh what did you think about the surprise like returns that we did get like we basically basically we haven't really talked about plot all that much but basically this was kind of mashing up the first issue of the infinity gauntlet with the stuff that came before it so like thanos quest Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we were more like we had Avengers actually active in Thanos quest where Thanos in in that storyline was just he's just collecting all the gems from whoever has them uh, and nobody knows about it. Whereas in this, everybody knows he's trying to get them and they're kind of actively trying to stop him. Mm -hmm. Uh, And in the course of that, we did have at least one surprise return of a character that nobody uh, probably even thought about. Red Skull. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't even Hugo Weaving. How'd you feel about that? It wasn't. I wasn't. Sh- yeah, I, I couldn't tell. Like I was trying to tell if it was him. I couldn't tell if it was him. It was it wasn't uh, him. It was uh, Aaron. Well, that's not actually his name, but Aaron from The Walking Dead. He does like a crazy amount of impressions, and so uh, what, he was recast. What, what was? Why? What's Hugo doing? I don't know. Probably demanding too much money. I want to do that one day. Me too. <laughs> I think it was fine, but I don't know. Weird. It was. I thought it was weird. I didn't understand. That's the most uh, out of everything in this movie. That's the most comic book feeling moment to me, <laughs> right? Because it's just like, what? Why? Why? <laughs> why is? Why is it him? Yeah, it, it felt like it should be like in the hmm, Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark thing, where he's like, "Oh, I've been guarding this whatever for ten thousand years, and now I can finally rest," or something like that. You know. <laughs> Right. I mean, well, that, looked... was, that was my question then. Once he got the soul gem, was uh, the Red Skull free? I don't know. Like, is he free to be a jerk well, again? Or is he stuck in the soul gem? Like I theorize a lot of people are right now. Maybe, yeah, probably. I mean, because he doesn't have anything to lead people to anymore. Yeah. So unless he's just like, I'm the <laughs> tourist of this jumping spot. <laughs> I, I, mean... I, I have the worst job. Well, the soul gem used to be here. It used to be here. The end. Buy a t-shirt. So you can, uh, if you're going to jump, uh, <clears throat> tip first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that was weird. That was the, I don't know. It was okay. I was actually, I was, I, it was a surprise. I was like, wait, what? What? <laughs> um, He looked cool. Oh, yeah. Well, that's his job. <laughs> he has one job. Look cool and be mean. Oh, that's two jobs. I don't understand how you're supposed to gauge people's powers in any of these things because people that seem like they are should be super, super powerful aren't. And people who don't seem like they should be able to do a whole lot do. So I'm, I'm you know, 
it's all very confusing to me. And like, how is Shazam supposed to save the day when, um, you know, <laughs> Shazam. he's like, well, he, Captain Marvel. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah, I get you. When you know all these other people wouldn't be able to. I don't. Know, I don't see how it would make a difference. That was her like, power. Her are, power sets are markedly different than a lot of. Uh, the heroes we've seen so far in that she's as close to Superman as we've gotten so far. Oh, really? Like her power sets are. Yeah. I mean, compared to what we've seen so far, she's probably not as strong as the Hulk, but in terms of like a broad set of powers, she can do a lot. I would think for the general viewer and a little bit, even for me, because I know people are excited for uh, a Captain Marvel movie Mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, I'm curious about it too, but I would think that the post credit scene for the general audience is, mm-hmm. you know, assuming they sat through the oh, credits. Yeah. yeah. I would think that'd be super disappointing because you're like, wait, what? What is that? Yeah. Right. What, what is, I was even kind of like, wait, what is that? And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. I think I had to explain it to Holly. And then I think Holly explained it to the gal that was sitting next to us. Mm-hmm. I think that Vision and the. Red Witch Lady, mm-hmm. whatever she is. Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch, yeah. I think that those two together should have been big Thanos. Oh, yeah. But they obviously weren't then because they couldn't even beat up his lackeys. Vision, they like really hampered in this oh, movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got stabbed out of nowhere and then he was just done. Yeah. And right. he should be one of the... My impression was he was like one of the most powerful characters mm-hmm. and the Scarlet Witch was the only one who could stall him in the earlier movies. Yeah. And they're both kind of useless in this. Exactly. Well, that's my. That's what I'm saying. It kind of, it kind of, you know, like it goes back to that same argument of like nobody knows how to use one of these stones. You know, like, and maybe, maybe it's just because the Vision has like a, a stone that doesn't really make sense for him. I would think that he'd have the Soul Gem because it basically makes him a person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's the. I think he has the Mind Gem. It's like. I guess I don't know, but it's like, yeah, you could basically Professor X this thing and just stop everyone in their tracks with mind control, mm-hmm. yeah, and use telekinesis and all sorts of stuff, and they don't even touch on it. And he just gets, yeah, he just gets stabbed and he's done. Yeah. See, what they needed to do, do was they needed to change their team up and instead of taking Iron Man and all those crap people. It should have been Vision, the Red Witch Lady. Uh, the uh, Doctor Strange, so that's that's time, like reality and uh, mind control. Yeah, that right there should have been enough. Dang it! <laughs> that's true, man. If they teamed up, yeah, movie See, over. They just need some- movie there'd over. be no, there'd be no, <laughs> yeah, there'd be no threat short of something Thanos level. Like yeah, done. See, Strange alone, like. That whole Dormammu thing. Like, yeah. I kind of liked how that played out in Doctor Strange. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Right. And at that point, it's just like, okay, well, yeah, dude, you control time. Like, what do you got to worry about? Nothing. And and kind of space, not really, but they can move around through whatever, through his little portals. They go like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was a little hoping for more. Um... Why were they stuck on the planet? <laughs> Why did? I mean... That's a good point. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe there's like. A distance thing with him, like Maybe. his magic is limited. Yeah, we can go through dimensions, but not, you know, across, you know, a couple. Even though that's exactly what he does in the books. Plus, I don't know that. I mean, they they were kind of stuck there, but they went there. They decided to go there. Okay, yeah, that's true. To fight Thanos away from Earth, like so. Them being there was a conscious decision. Once they, because they could have figured out how to turn that ship back. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm a little surprised Tony Stark didn't talk him into sending Spider Man back, but. Yeah. Spider Man. <laughs> You're Avenger kid. I, I like I like the Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man was well used in this, I think. Uh, yeah, I thought so. Even even uh the uh Iron Spider stuff, which is like, oh, it's a little it's a little uh quick. Just all of a sudden your whole new suit. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. Well I'm he was planning it though, obviously. Yeah. When they te- they teased it in his movie. They teased it at the end of uh Spider Man, so Oh, I didn't see that, and I'm not going to. Yeah, I, I, try, I, I offered to watch it with you, but you didn't. You weren't interested. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. We did watch Black Panther mm-hmm. just what last weekend or something. Yeah, because I figured that would have more like impact on this movie than Spider Man would. Mm-hmm. Boy, were and you I, wrong? 
<laughs> well, yeah, no, you're kind of right. But at least having watched that, when they do go to Wakanda, then I know who. Uh, at least you have a bearing for what's that going on because otherwise I would have no clue. Yeah. yeah, and it makes me feel sympathy for the one guy because how many times has he died now? Black Panther, T'Challa, whatever the heck his name is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm glad they did. I'm glad they put the Black Panther stuff in there because mm-hmm. I like Black Panther and I I found that I thought it was enjoyable. I like those characters. Mm-hmm. Great movie. And it it brought you know it was a good way to also bring Bucky back in because that's where he was. He was hanging out in Wakanda. Right. Yeah. Bucky didn't do anything in this movie, though, did he? He didn't do anything, but he set up one of the best rocket raccoon jokes or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of, uh, I, I will get that arm. It's like, just that. I was like, <laughs> that was good. So good. That was good. That's so good. Mm-hmm. Didn't like Groot in this movie. No. You didn't like him? Uh, He's a teenager. You know, you're not supposed to like him. Uh, uh, that was kind of... Yeah, fair enough. They handled that well, at least. Like, mm-hmm. for one, we don't get hit with I am Groot over and over and over. Yeah. And yeah. like it was amusing that l- almost the whole time, except for during the fight, that he's just walking around playing his yeah. little game. So. Did you read that article that I posted? I don't know what you're talking about. The I Am Groot one. Oh, that one's. No. I mean, like, yeah, that does change things a little bit. Other than that, though, he was kind of a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> it's a debil- It's like a disease. Yeah, no, I seen that. I didn't read the article, oh, but I seen. I, I had the gist of it. Okay. It's funny because we like. Uh, the way that we handle these movie reviews is we we start off by saying how much we like the movie, and then we just tear it to pieces. It's kind of well, true. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but see, if, you, if you're if you still good, you, you, even though we can find all these things wrong with you, that just means... Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, that... All right, let's... let's okay, let's go super nitpicks. Chris, Chris Pratt, they made the joke. He is looking a little chubbier. <laughs> a little chubbier in this one. They even made the joke. I was okay with that. I was, I was that was kind of nice, actually. I was like, I, good. No, I do. Good. I do like it because he start. He looks normal again. Yeah. Because he's that's kind of how he normally looks. Right. They even he even motions to his like throat and his face. Mm-hmm. That's where it is. And I was like, they're totally right. I was I was kind of like, why, why does he look? He, something looks different. When that's, his chops. That's what it is. His chops were super extreme too. Like I don't think he had what do you call them? The chops. <laughs> The pork chops, yeah. the the sideburns. Yeah, sideburns. There you go. That said, Chris Pratt in this movie still like a hundred times better shape than I am. So yeah, yeah, me too. I'm not really, I'm not really dissing the guy. I just thought it no, was funny. No. And I was like, he, yeah, he did. His face did look a little thicker, a little fuller. Even yeah. the, even though like you you get so mad at him because he makes like the worst choices, I actually like him better in this than I did in Guardians Two. Because yeah. in, in Guardians 2, he was, I mean, like, I get it because it was his arc, but he was kind of a sad sack the whole time. Uh, in this, at least he was, like, back to being the Star-Lord I kind of expected. The only thing I didn't really care for about, or care for, him, like, the way he was handled, it, not that it's not within character, because it is, but I didn't like, and of course this is what they're going to do, it just seems so on the nose and easy, is the, like, Thor jealousy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that said. It's played for laughs and it's effective. Yeah, it's they had a lot of good lines out of it, though. Yeah, this is no, this is true. This is true. I did like the Thor. It's so weird coming after Thor Ragnarok, though, because he he's looser than he used to be, but he's not quite Ragnarok level in this. Oh mm-hmm. no, yeah, he's super serious. G- granted, he did watch all the people oh, he yeah, fought so good. hard to to protect that's die. A good point. And I did like that scene with him and and Rocket. Yeah. Where, I mean, it's as close of an emo- to an emotional scene with Thor that we get. Yeah, yeah. no, it was. It was good. Uh, I uh, yeah, Rocket handled it well. Yeah, I hope that. Well, I have things I could lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah. right. Yep. Right. Giant Peter Dinklage. Yes. Wow, my mind was blown. <laughs> I was like, "What? You know what? <laughs> That's the biggest surprise of this movie." Yeah, 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 no doubt. It was great. There weren't too many new characters, but you know, like, whoa. Not to sidetrack off of Peter Dinklage already, because mm-hmm. that was pretty great and also weird, and it, it makes sense that they lowered his voice, but that was really throwing me. I was like, "Whoa!" Speaking of surprise characters and stuff, I was actually a little surprised we didn't get some. We didn't really get. Uh, I'm surprised the extent of the surprise characters were Red Skull, <laughs> Red Skull, and Peter yeah. Dinklage. Yeah, because I thought we'd either get some new buddy, some new somebody, or we'd get I don't know, like. I just expected someone to pop up where that just blows everybody's mind. Mm-hmm. Like Batrock the Leaper. No? I wouldn't know <laughs> that. No. no. <laughs> that, uh, they the should have done... Winter what's Soldier. That, what's that chick's name? The 
Sith? wifey Sith? chick that Thanos made. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been, uh, been crazy. I don't know how to say her name. It's kind of X in it. Taraxia. Yeah, something yeah. like that. That would have been fun. Mm-hmm. And they could have watched the sunset together. Aww. Okay, so let's talk. <laughs> so let's talk. Let's talk Thanos because we kind of haven't been right. Mar- kind of the ongoing thing, at least until the last couple of movies, is Marvel's villains suck. Like they, that's they do oftentimes what people point to, except for Loki. I think that I think they've gotten better because I really liked Michael Keaton in the Spider-Man movie. Yeah, I was gonna say I liked I liked Michael Keaton. Well, but he's Michael Keaton. I haven't watched it, but I know he was great because he's Michael Keaton. Yeah, yeah. No, he well, ma- and- <laughs> he makes that movie. I mean, like Tom Holland and and Michael Keaton. Boom, good enough. And Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. Yep. He's the he's the bad guy in in Black, Black Panther. Panther. He dies mm-hmm. though, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. See, we he gotta does. stop killing the good ones. You know. Watching the sunset. He died. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> but did he? Yeah, he did. No, I know he did. Um. <laughs> But vibranium, yeah, it can do everything except you know. Oh, I loved his little. Anything. I loved his last speech about like because uh, T'Challa is even like you know we can we can save you. And I loved his little speech about slaves jumping off the ship mm. and um, death being better than whatever. Like I thought that was great. Yeah, people like his character a lot mm-hmm. in terms of villain, and I think he's good. So because that kind of seems to be the thing. Like they kind of figured out that like. It doesn't work when we just have an evil doer. Just like, yeah, it just wants has some evil plan. Like they need to be somebody where their motivations and duh, come on, their motivations are somewhat relatable. Wait, you can't you can't sense. just have the dude be an evil version of Iron Man? Yeah. <laughs> it I mean that's one thing like with Black Panther, I was even kind of, not to sidetrack, but I was even kind of worried because I'm like once he got like oh, once yeah. he like took over the I'm like so he <laughs> so he's literally an evil Black Panther. You no, know, exactly. He's just, he's got the same power set now. He's got the same suit. It's just a different color. And so I was a little worried, but like they handled the actual character of him well enough that I think that worked still. Black Panther can't be another color because then he wouldn't be the Black Panther. His suit had like purple and stuff though, too. Mm. And uh, Kilgore, no, Killmonger. Killmonger had like yellow accents. Mm. Yeah. Because he went with the flashier suit. Yeah. Anyway, so, so Thanos, is he, how do you guys feel he fits into the Marvel villains? You think he's one of the I okay, I think he's one of the better ones. I think he's works in that formula I, they've kind I of come do, up with. I do, except that he also feels like the least villainous of the villains somehow. Yeah, well because because of the new formula. Yeah, but right. I th- I think you're right though because well, even Killmonger, mm-hmm. he still was pretty evil. Yeah, he, he killed a lot did of people. Some stu- yeah, I mean just like burn he's, it down. He's, he's, he choked that one lady out. Well, that's that's the angry from having to live in the ghetto than him. And uh, what's his butt? Uh, seems to have had a privileged life on Titan when it was alive. And Thanos. So I would agree. Like that might be the downside is they kind of didn't make him evil enough. Well, he's evil in his acts, but his uh, maybe it's just his demeanor is it, misleading. Yeah. Like when but he like when he makes bubbles, like he makes your laser turn into bubbles it's like uh, that just doesn't seem as threat i mean like it's it's a use of power by big time it's big time use of power but it doesn't feel like strength at the same time or or viciousness or whatever like when people when people are coming to attack you when you change reality and you make them into a coil of like fun fetty or something Uh, so i uh, i love that though because that is straight out of the comic oh yeah that was yeah that was great i I was while okay so this will probably end up leading into our the perspectives, but I had read the first three issues of the six issue Infinity Gauntlet before we got a chance to see this. Mm-hmm. And reading those, I was like, "Man, I hope he does some stuff like that." Yeah, not really expecting him to do that exact stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think it actually like when he turned the what's his name into like blocks. Yes, mm-hmm. I, it kind of jarred me at first because I didn't until he hit the ground. I was like, "Oh, those are solid like blocks." I was like. Did he just cube that guy? Like actual cube that guy, but uh, <laughs> yes. it wasn't like gory cube. Mm. And then the ribbon thing, yeah, it's goofy, but man, it was straight out of the comic. So I was kind of mm. the bubbles. I don't think Thanos would have done bubbles. The no. bubbles was for our benefit, right? As yeah. viewers, it was it was a comic release, is all. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they stuck to the character of the character very well, though. 
Well, yeah, they totally changed him in terms of yeah his motivation and everything. They were they were gonna. I mean, they had to. Yeah. Yeah. How do you? That was one thing I was so curious going in. I was like, how do they? What? How do they change it so that this makes sense? Because they're not gonna do the death thing, right? Mm-hmm. And if it's him just trying to woo some chick, like, yeah, really. Well, it wasn't even about that though. I mean, well, I mean, I guess the the snap was, but but the gauntlet thing had nothing to do with her really. In fact. It, he was kind of going against her when he did it. Yeah, she was upset about that. Yeah, but him having the gauntlet, I mean, obviously that is the threat, but that's not the threat. It's what he's going to do with the gauntlet. One of the things that I find interesting, comparing the movie and the book, the end of the book is kind of like the end of this movie, almost. Yeah, no, with him... Like sitting there oh, yeah, this yeah, simple no, life. That, yeah, I kind of totally. like that. I, definitely, I, I'm sure they pulled from that. Yeah, but it's not the end, though. Right. It's right. interesting because that aside... Mm-hmm. That scene aside, the end of this movie is kind of the first issue yeah. of the miniseries. Yeah, basically. Or the second issue. It all yeah. happens in the first issue, and then second issue is already Fallout. Yeah, they played that off long enough to where I was like, they're not going to do it, are they? And then when they did it, I was like, oh, okay. Well, how much movie we got left? Are they going to? Right. They're going to, I'm like, they're going to reverse it. And they are. Yeah. But I was like, they're, they're going to reverse it. And then they didn't at the end of the movie. I was like, that took yeah. so we've we've alluded to the uh to the different perspectives we should probably like full on explain what we're talking about there so going into this movie i had read half of the infinity gauntlet miniseries which is six issues which we will talk about next episode but how about you guys what had you read i just read it today so you had not read it going you had not read the infinity i had not read any of it going into it okay and I had, I read it, but I had read it a long time ago. And so I didn't even need spoilers. I just figured it out. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, ah, I already know what the end is. Just based on how people were reacting and how they were like, I mean, like the base reaction from people who are trying not to give spoilers and God bless them because they did pretty well, really. Uh, yeah. I mean, over overall, it was uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Um but there was enough of a. I'm assuming. Oh yeah, kind of yeah. There, there, there was, was an, enough of an atmosphere. To yeah, indicate. like you could you could tell that something horrible had happened, and it was like, oh, well, that's easy. I know exactly what happens in the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, half the world is gone, you know. And and I didn't think I was like like going into it. I just assumed that nothing would be the same because they've kind of just played loose, fast and loose with the rules of all the stories that they've done, you know, like age of Ultron had nothing to do with the, the book version of the same name. And so when it came to this, I was like, I'm just going to go in and enjoy it because they've done pretty well with these things in the past, but they almost never are exactly the same. And so when I was like, Oh snap, they're, they're going to do it. Oh snap. Literally, uh, snap, literally pun pun, pun intended. Uh, Oh snap. Uh, and then, then I, like I started piecing it together. I was like, this thing was originally called infinity war part one and part two. Mm -hmm. And I, that's when I figured it out. And then I looked at, I mean, I probably shouldn't have gone down the rabbit hole, but I did, I tracked it down the rabbit hole and I was like, okay, the next two movies are Ant-Man and Wasp and, uh, and Captain Marvel. And then it's Avengers again already. Mm-hmm. And we already know that Captain Marvel is set in the past. It's set in the nineties. Like they've already released oh. that information so they can do that movie and it won't affect anything. And then come to find out that Ant-Man and Wasp weren't there anyways. Well, that's even easier. Yeah. So I was like, ah, I, yeah, I, I basically, I was like, oh, it's still a two parter. They just aren't saying it anymore. Cause they had changed. They made the decision to change the name and they they very publicly made that decision and then I didn't think about it for a long time. And it was like, oh, that's very clever. That's very clever. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's not tricking anybody. Everybody knows there's going to be something to undo it all. Right. You're not that good. Right. right. When the, I think that is the one part about this that is like, oh, if I hadn't read this and I was part of the general population, maybe I would be a little more freaked out. What do you think about that? Well, see, now this is, and Melanie, you know, she you, you have more insight into how, like, the comic stories usually play out than the general audience. But Melanie's the one of us that went into it having not 
read any of the Infinity stuff. I had read half, but like I said, the end of this movie is kind of the beginning of Infinity Gauntlet. So mm-hmm. I at least kind of knew that was going might happen. I was still surprised they went through with it. But you not knowing, how how did that strike you? The end? Yeah. I was surprised, but I never once would believe that they're going to leave it that way. Yeah. It's not going to happen. So even, okay, so I... Too much money to throw away. Right. Okay, so here's a mistake. Everybody knows they're going to turn at least most of it back. The problem is they killed off too many. At the end, they killed off too many key characters. They killed off the Black Panther. Right. Like, that movie made a bazillion dollars. They're not killing that, Black that Panther. That may be the one that they shouldn't have killed. Like, that well, may have been the bridge too far. Uh, the only the only Guardian of the Galaxy that's still alive is the raccoon. Yeah, that's true. I think true. that might have been the bridge <laughs> too far. That's better. true, too. That's, that's true. That's true. And, and I know, you know, I was telling Melanie, like, it's like, I just, the other day, saw James Gunn on Instagram posting about him writing Volume 3, so... Right. I know they didn't just kill the entire cast of Volume 3. Yeah. <laughs> Reading the comic, it's it's one of those things, because especially in comics, you kind of expect... Guardians of the Galaxy weren't in the comics. But uh, no. No. Is his name Strax? Drax. Drax. Drax, Drax was. Oh, oh, that Drax. <laughs> he's not one of them. He's in, in the movie. He's Guardians in the Guardians. The big, dumb... Oh, he was? Yeah. He was in there? Yeah, he's in the comics. Yeah. Oh. He looks a bit different, he's, but he's still yeah, green. He, he's and quite dumb. he's quite different though. Like he's brain damage type dumb. Not like yeah, not he's like literal just dumb. Yeah. Instead of like funny dumb. Mm-hmm. Reading the comics, even just one or two issues in, it's one of those things where as soon as it hits catastrophic levels, mm-hmm. I'm like, this is all gonna get reversed. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know that right off the bat. Yeah. And as soon as this movie started killing like main characters. Key characters, I'm like, oh. Yeah. I mean, I was still impressed that they went out with it. But again, they, too many. They they really should have toned that back. And I think people would maybe buy into it more. Right. Yeah. Like like Spider-Man, I could believe because everybody's like, well, you could do Miles Morales. Boom. There you go. I believe it all of a sudden, you know. But mm-hmm. when you when you just had Black Panther and he's only had like two stories total and now he's gone. Nah. And then you didn't get rid of any of the original Avengers. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, that was crap. They didn't, did they? Nope. None of they're, the originals. They're all there. On one hand, I think I'd have been way more surprised if I went into this not knowing anything. Right. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, stuff like the snap and various other things, because there's other calls to it. like, Well, like the Hulk, when the Hulk falls through uh, Doctor Strange's. Like that is like perfect from the comics, except it's, you know, in the movie it's Hulk instead of the Silver Surfer. But I was like, whoa. Yeah, Dude, cool. Like, I'm surprised how closely they did follow it. Yeah, exactly. Which kind of makes me wonder, like, I wonder how close they're going to continue to follow it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get into that in the next episode, I'm sure. Because I don't want to spoil that. But The other thing, since you mentioned Hulk, what's the deal with Hulk? Yeah, that was interesting. And that's a total departure. Because in, uh, in the books, at that point in time, Hulk is just the Hulk. He isn't banner like all the time. He isn't banner at all. But in this one, he just came off of Ragnarok, and uh, and Hulk doesn't want to come back out at all. Yeah, yeah. Which is interesting because he was out for a really long time. Mm-hmm. You think he would have gotten used to you know being in charge? And I kind of agree that this is probably at least like in story reasoning is like Hulk was put down by Thanos in a way that no nobody ever has. So I'm like, okay, so maybe that's why he didn't want to come back. Thor Ragnarok did pretty good at establishing the Hulk's personality Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because generally we don't get that. We get, he hulks out, smashes a bunch of things, then he's banner again, Mm -hmm. but we actually got time with the character of the Hulk and he is that kind of childish, like, no, throw a fit and like, I'm not going (laughs) to, nope. Yeah. You're, you're tiny Avenger throws a thing across the room. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. Oh God, that scene's so good. That's why that movie's so good. Take ridiculous characters, Hulk and Thor, and then just, Give them like character scenes to mm-hmm. throw a tantrum at each other in a room. It's so good. But anyway, so that works. But from an outside of movie reason, from like a studio reality reason, why do you guys think they decided to do that? I, I mean, I kind of like that they gave because they don't own own Surfer, Silver Surfer. No, no. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, I know that. I know that. <laughs> but why do you guys think once they took Hulk out of play at the beginning, mm-hmm. they didn't let him come back? 
Oh. They just put just to build him up for so that it's a bigger deal when he comes back for Avengers Four. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. I did like that they gave Banner a chance to like be a part of the action as not the Hulk. I appreciated that. It also raises the stakes, you know, like he's not involved, so it's like, oh, what are we gonna do? Because otherwise, you just throw the big green guy at the big purple guy, and boom. And and then they'll have some something for what's about to explore. With him to help, you know, whatever strengthen their relationship. Red, um, not red. Black widow. Black yeah, widow. Yeah. Oh no, I don't. I just don't want him to ever. <laughs> don't ever again. do that again. That did not work for me. I don't understand. It was so out of nowhere in Avengers Two. Like I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't either. But they already did it, so it's done. They had a moment. You saw it. You felt it. And then Thor kind of made fun of it, which I loved. <laughs> yeah. When he kept trying to do this, sun's going down, sun's going down. And Banner's like, why do you keep saying that? <laughs> sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah. <sighs> so let's talk about Thor Ragnarok. No. <laughs> that's, I was gonna say, we, that's the movie we actually want to talk about, clearly. Yeah, I I like this. I like this quite a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though it did feel more more like mashing movies instead of just characters together. Like, I think it worked. And like I said, when, I don't know, we were talking about Defenders at one point. I kind of liked that feel of like, it's not just watching this thing. You're watching like five shows at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of liked that. Somehow they pulled it off. Like they did Uh it really well. Yeah, they did. I liked, I liked whenever people met. It was always fun. Yes. I loved when Iron Man and uh, that whole beginning thing between Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Doctor Strange and Wong, like that whole thing Mm -hmm. was like, you're making me look silly in front of the wizards. Yeah. Yeah. There's some great uh, Robert Downey Jr. moments in that. Mm -hmm. And I like when they met the Guardians of the Galaxy up on the moon. Yeah. Or the planet, whatever. Mm -hmm. And everybody was... Trying to murder each other because they thought both and whatever. I, I like that whole thing too. Uh-huh. It took them a little, like a long time to figure it out. A part of me is like, I'm just being manipulated. I'm being manipulated by a big movie studio. <laughs> but it's, it's, at least they learned. They're being successful because, man, I love it when I'm like, oh, this guy from that movie and that guy from this movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at a certain point, it's not, it's not manipulation anymore. It's we know what you like and we're going to give it to you. That's because true. that's what you want. And it is what we want. So, yeah, give it to me. <laughs> That's true. They're and they man, they yeah, they're getting the formula down. And eventually they'll have to change the formula once we all figure it out, once we figure it out, once everybody complains because the spot, sky beams for the most part are gone. Right. But I don't remember what YouTube video pointed it out, but jumping from vehicle to vehicle or spaceship to spaceship is the new sky beam. <laughs> and and they're right, it happens in Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. But so There wasn't a Wobo machine either. What's that? There wasn't a Wobo <laughs> dubstep machine, either. machine. I almost thought they were going to go Wobo machine when they started in Wakanda when that stuff started coming down, but they didn't really play it that way. Yeah. But Wakanda, uh, for being all technologically advanced, they didn't have much technology, in my opinion. They were all fighting on the field. Do they not have why were they, laser cannons? Why were they doing hand to hand? Well, and somebody, had- somebody pointed out like they spent all that time in Black Panther, like building up the rhinos. And using them like barely at all, and then in this movie they had one mo- they had their like uh, was it Thermopylae? They had they had their three hundred moment, their bottleneck, and where mm-hmm. were the rhinos? No rhinos exactly. in that moment. This is when we need them. Yep, and they need to have laser cannons on their heads. Yeah, mm-hmm. they just wanted. To th- they're like, we gotta throw faceless monsters, the hordes of monsters at them, and yeah, those were kind of cool. They, the monsters were cool, though. Like, yeah, you're right. They kind of remind me. I don't know why, because they're not really similar at all. But you remember that uh, Attack on the Block movie? Attack the Block? Yeah. yeah Attack the Block. That's mm-hmm. what it is. They kind of remind me of that creature. I don't know why, because they're not any, it's really similar at all. But Mm-mm. but maybe just like the kind of the way they ran and stuff. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. so. Were, the, the were these the good. same uh, aliens from the first movie, from Avengers 1? Was this the, uh, I can't even remember what they're called. No. I, I don't believe so. Those were more like bugs, and these are oh, more the, like. Was it the Chitari or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, yeah, these are... More like dogs. Yeah, a bit more beastie. Okay. So anyway, all those things are wrong with it, but it's still good, so go watch it. No, yeah, but I mean, we kind of had to pick on flaws, but... Well, we have to we have to be different from other podcasts, because I feel like that's all it's been, has been uh, a love fest for this movie. <laughs> Which, you know, rightly so. It's a good movie, but... Like, I'm... Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling at, at love this, fest. At this point, but... at this point, we have to be... Nitpicky. Like I said, we've got to blow them away with our awesome, which yep. is us being horrible. <laughs> <laughs>
We really weren't that bad. We're, because- we're, it's got to be us making fun of uh, Chris Pratt gaining a little bit of weight. Okay, maybe that was kind of terrible. It's my bad. <laughs> Me as the like most overweight of one of the three of us. <laughs> I get to say that. Okay. I want. Where's Where's my fat superhero? They do need a fat superhero. Deadpool two. Really? Yep. Go for it. Okay. Cool. We're gonna go see it. Yeah, we're gonna see it Tuesday. Tuesday. In terms of Avengers, one more thing. In terms of Avengers movies, we've had three. Although in my mind, I kind of count Civil War as an Avengers movie too. Of the three Avengers movies, where does this sit for you guys? I don't remember three of them, but I'll there see. was the first one. You remember that one? No. The Tesseract. Loki was kind of the big bad, and then. How do you not remember the first one? That's the first one. Okay, no, I know I do remember. The first one. <laughs> right. A big part of it is on their they're on the flying ship and Yep. Okay, I got that one. The second one is Age of Ultron. That one I don't blame you for not remembering I don't that much. Remember that one either, yeah. Which one it was the one where we met the girl and her brother who died? Avenge uh Two. Age of Ultron. Yeah. Two, yeah. Okay. So I remember some of it. Okay. It's tough because like you said earlier, uh it they're all very different. Like mm-hmm. all three is, of them are kind of their own thing. Which is good. Yeah. It's good. I mean, maybe it's just because this is... No, that's not true, because I did not care that much for the second one. This might be my favorite. Yeah. I would say, I like, I like this one. I probably like this one the best, because like things do, it evolved, you know? Like, mm-hmm. And it's not an origin movie, which I have an issue with anyways. It's like, okay, we have to meet, we have to do this. And it was really good. The The first movie was... The first Avengers is groundbreaking, but... Um, I'm just so glad that this one did not spend any time doing that. That's an interesting thing. Now, I, I realize anybody going to see this, they've seen a Marvel movie. Right. They've been making these things for what, like um, almost 10 years, 20, 10 years, is 10, years, 10 years. Yep. So, but can you imagine going and seeing this without any context, not having seen any of the others? It'd be like, you couldn't. The first thing you do is read a Marvel crossover movie. I mean, book, <laughs> crossover <laughs> yeah. book. Yeah. 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 There'd be, that's one thing you're supposed to look at movies like, okay, so it's a part of a series, but how would it be as a standalone? And I think it'd be fine, like entertainment as a standalone, but it dedicates, and thankfully so, 10 years, we don't need any more setup. It dedicates no time to establishing anybody because they're all established. Well, well, yeah. So that's a pro for me, but. It is, but if if you're talking standalone, not just the movie, but the movies, like if all I was going to watch was going to be the Avengers movies. They it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense jumping from one to the other to the other because so much of what goes oh. on in it is in other movies. You couldn't watch this trilogy as a trilogy. No, you couldn't. It and that kind of sucks. That it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. But other than that, just interesting to think about. But that's not what these are about. These are a series. This is a TV show with massive budgets. You know. Yeah. All right, we got no letters. Uh, so <laughs> we have no letters page this episode. Um, if you want to send us some e- uh, email or maybe even like an MP3 voice clip or voice message or something, be our letters page letter, be our letters page letters at grolicspodcast.com. There's also a phone number. You know what? This seems like a good time to drop in audio that I haven't played for a while. Cause I don't remember the phone number offhand. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Who turned out the lights? Where did I end up now? This stupid time traveling blinkatron, I swear. There's a, there's a blinkatron, it's just going. Oh. It's, a, it's okay. Oh, crap. Shh, shh. Just stay asleep. Okay. All right, well, right place, wrong time. Uh, this is fine. This is fine. I'll just leave him a note. There has to be some paper around here somewhere. Man, it's dark. Here we go, paper. Jesse, this is Randy. From in the future! There's, there's some important donuts. There's, there's just... Why why would they do that? That's stupid. Jesse, this is Randy. From in the future. Just leaving this note to remind you to let listeners know how they can send us their feedback for the letters page segment. Be sure to tell them they can send us an email to letters at grolixpodcast.com. It's G-R-A-W-L-I-X podcast.com. And we'll read it on the show. If they'd like to hear their voice on the show, they can send us a voice recording or do it the old-fashioned way. Pick up a phone and leave us a voice message. 
The phone number to do that is 559-426-6427. That's 559-426-6427. Or an easier way to remember it is 559-4-COMICS. Tell them to try to keep it under two minutes. And remember, we do a clean language show. Regardless what the YouTube algorithm says. I would remind myself, but it doesn't go well when I try to visit my past selves. It's too... paradoxical. Thanks. Alright, now just to leave this on his nightstand. He's a spider buggy. And with that taken care of, I can try to get back to episode 100. There's too much exhaust. Wait a minute. It occurs to me, I have a unique opportunity here. Hmm. That just might be too much magnificent manly beard for one podcast. There can only be one. This is Jesse. Well, I tried to start a revolution, but I didn't print enough Grolix, so hardly anyone turned up, except for my mom and her boyfriend, who I hate. This is Melanie. You will never be a Grolix. This is Randy. You throw another Grolix at me and I'm going to lose it. Thank you for listening to the Grolix Podcast. The Grolix Podcast is a production of the Electronic Media Collective and Vocal Arrow Studios. For more Grolix Podcast, visit GrolixPodcast.com. Like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Grolix Podcast. Or follow us on Twitter at Grolix Podcast. We're also everywhere, all the time, all at once. I kept getting a call at work the other day, and when I did the reverse lookup, it was from a disconnected number that was, I don't know, it, for some cell phone, from whatever, but I'm like, how can a disconnected number make a phone call? Did the power line fall down onto a grave? Was it from beyond? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But I called the company that owns the number. And I'm like, uh, your disconnected number called me. So you might want to look into that and see what's going on. <laughs> Lawnmower man was calling from a pet cemetery. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yep.